Welcome back to Flovia Automations. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can edit any PDF in N8N using no code at all. So let's get into it. So the way that we're going to be doing this today is actually going to be using PDF.co's API, and we're going to be using the search and replace with text. So you can see the um, search up PDF.co documentation and you can find all of the reference um, information here. But this is what we're going to be using to do this um, automation today. So if we go hop back into our workflow, um, I'm going to quickly run through it and show you guys how it works. And then we'll actually go into how to build this step by step. So if we actually just open up this last node here and just execute the workflow, it's going to ask us to open um, upload a document. We already have one ready to go here. So we're going to submit that. And once we submit it, you can see that the workflow is going to receive that document, upload it to our Google Drive to have it somewhere on a cloud referenced, and then it's actually going to send it off to our Slack server. Once it sends it off to our Slack server, you can see that it's asking us if we want to request any changes. And this is the document that we're going to be working with today. So this is a simple purchase order. And the two target informations that we're going to be going for is going to be the purchase order and the purchase order number. You can edit anything on this page, um, but we're going to focus on these two for today. So we can go back and actually go ahead and request these changes. So we're going to say change the purchase order number to, let's just say, 4567 and the document type from purchase order to invoice. All right. So what we're asking is that we want to change uh, the purchase order number from 1011 to 4567. And we want to change the document type from purchase order to invoice. So if we go ahead and submit that, we can close out of this and hop back into our workflow where you can see it received that request. It's going to send it off to our AI agent who's actually going to structure a JSON payload to be sent off to the PDF.co API. Once the PDF.co API receives it and um, changes everything that's been requested, it's going to re-download it and send it back to our Slack server. So if we go back into here, we can see that the new document has been sent over and we can see the changes are done. The uh, document type is now an invoice and the number has been changed to 4567. So you can see before it was a purchase order 1011 and now it says invoice 4567. Now that you guys kind of see a quick overview of how this works, Let's actually get into how we can build this. All right. So the first step is going to be getting our form submission. So we're going to click on here and we're going to click on the on form submission. Um, from there, we're going to go ahead and submit a title. So we're just going to say this is our document upload. And we'll give a quick description saying this is where you can edit PDFs. Now we want to add on a form element and uh, we're going to name this the PDF and we're going to change this down to file. We're going to make it only to accept one file to make this easier. And we are going to make this a required field. You can add on other fields as well. I'm sure you can imagine a bunch of use cases for this, but just for the video's sake, we're going to keep it to just the file and we can quickly see this by executing it and see that we have um, everything here. We're going to upload a file right now, just so we can have it in our workflow when we're uh, continuing to work. Uh, we'll select it here and submit and you can see that we received the binary file here now from here what you want to do is you actually want to upload this binary file to a cloud somewhere so you can reference it later in the workflow um, this is my only downfall i feel like about n8n is with the form submission when you upload a binary file um, there's no way to continue ref continuing uh, Lee reference it in the future so we're going to upload it to a cloud and we're going to use the google drive today so we're going to go get the google drive we're going to select upload file. If you don't already have your account set up, go ahead and do that. Um, also, if you don't have a folder set up in your drive that you want this specifically to do that now and then come back to the video. We have one set up already um, right here, document editing. And uh, there's a few key things that we want to focus on here. The input data name, I'm sure a lot of you are used to just leaving it as data because that's the generic one that uh, N8N uh, provides for you. But since we named our form field PDF, our binary uh, file is actually going to be named that as well. So that's what we're going to put in this uh, position here. Sorry, this position here. So you're going to want to put your whatever name is here in the input data field name. 
And the file name is anything that you choose. We're just going to say invoice 1011 because we know that's what that is. Now that you have all of these things selected, we can easily um, execute the step and we can see that the file um, has now been uploaded. Once we do that, we actually want to now re-retrieve this. I know it seems kind of uh, redundant that we uploaded it and now we're retrieving it. But the reason why we uploaded it is so we can reference it on later in the workflow, as you guys will see. So now that we have this, we want to find another drive node. Go ahead, we're going to download file. And downloading the file is going to be super easy. All of this stays the same, except we want to change this to by ID and simply just grab the ID of the file we just uploaded and re-download it here. And we can see that we got that back. Now that we have this file back, we actually want to upload it to our Slack server. That way we can actually make this a human in the loop and a realistic workflow that can actually um, be implemented. You could use Discord, you could use WhatsApp, even if you have that set up. You can even do this in email as well. So any send and wait response node will, uh, will work with this. We're just going to use Slack in this video. So we're going to go ahead and search for the Slack node. And we're going to go and find the upload file um, action. So for the upload file, we want to make sure that you have the correct um, Slack account selected. File, upload, the file property data, um, which matches over here. And the only other thing that we're going to add on is the option for the channel name so we know where it gets sent off to. And you can see that we have one already created called document editing. We can go ahead and test that step, go into our server, and we can see that we just had one sent over to us now. And once we go back, um, now we want to actually send the wait and response node. So we're going to find another Slack node here. We're going to go down and go for the send message and wait for response node. Now with this one, you want to make sure you have everything selected correctly again. Uh, you want to make sure it's going to the exact same place that you just sent the previous node. So the previous node was just kind of um, sending the file off. And now this is the actual place where they can request the changes to that file. So we'll select the same channel that we did before. And we're going to say uh, request any changes. If I can type you would like down below. All right. And then we're going to change the response type from approval to be a uh, free text. That way the user can just send in a big free text of whatever they would want. And then with the options, there's a few things here. Um, they're all optional, of course. But the main one that I always like to do is the append N8N attribution. I always like to turn this off because if you don't, it's going to send a link to your workflow with the message, um, which I just feel like is unnecessary. Uh, but yeah, so once we have all of that kind of set up here, uh, another thing that I actually like to add as well is the message button label. So what do you want the message like button label to actually say? And we're going to type in request changes. So if you would like to request any changes, then click this button. Go ahead and execute this and see what it looks like. And if we go back, you can see um, the message here. Usually when you submit and in the, um, in the workflow, a PDF takes a few seconds to be uploaded to the server. So this message will actually show up first. That's why I said down below. But since we're doing it testing and you saw me execute them separately, obviously now this one came second. But we can go ahead and just make changes. So same as before, we'll say change the purchase order number two. Let's just do one, two, three, four this time. And the document type from purchase order to invoice. I like to specify from purchase order to invoice because sometimes it might not know what you mean by document type. But if you say, hey, from purchase order to invoice, it'll know exactly what you mean. But yeah, once you have this, you're going to want to submit that. We can close out of this, go back to our workflow, and you can see we received that input here. Now, once you have this input received here, we actually want to take a look at the original document. So we want to get the original document and actually see what the PO number was and what the document type was in the first place. So the way that we do that is we're going to have to grab our uh, document again. And you can see why it was useful to upload it to the drive is because now we can simply just download the file, go to the ID that where it was uploaded, drag it in here, execute this, and we have that file right there nice and quick. So now that we have that nice and easy, we can go ahead and extract the data from it, which N8N makes it nice and easy. They have a node here, so we're going to go extract from file, extract from PDF, make sure your binary field matches up to whatever is over here, and simply just execute this. So you can see it returned us everything that we have here, 
and it's generated all of the text extracted from our document. And now that we have this um, text generation and we have the request that we want, we can actually now send this over to our AI agent to actually go ahead and um, structure that JSON payload for us. So let's go ahead and look, on, look at how we can do that. So now let's go ahead and look into um, how to build these AI kind of agent step. Um, I've already kind of built these out. It would take too long to do it all in the video. Um, so if you need to pause and stop and see what you actually want to write out, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but this first model is going to be actually just structuring the data that we just received from um, the extract data. Some people ask me all the time, Can, couldn't you extract the data and then um, create the JSON payload all in the same AI? You could do that, um, but personally, I like to have it this way. That way, I know that this is specifically meant for this task and the memory doesn't get lost or for whatever reason, the AI starts getting mi mixing up the tasks together. This way, it's just separated between the two. So what you want to do is connect your accounts, select the model that you want. Um, I actually don't know why it's set to 4.0. We'll do a 4.1 mini. Um, simply saying the first system prompt that you're an intelligent bot that is ex graded at extracting data. Here is the information that you need to extract. And this is the document that we give it. So we say, here's the document that, need, that you need to extract the information from, and we give it this JSON text. So we simply just drag this over and put it into here. Now that we have that, the last um, kind of prompt we give it is how we want to structure the data. The structure that I gave it was a very kind of intricate structure. Um, reason being is that I actually use this for clients and other invoices. So pretty much this is just a big kind of um, structure for any type of purchase orders, invoices. And you can see it has all the data that you would need. If you're using a document that has other data, obviously go ahead and do this. Simple way, um, you can upload it to ChatGPT or Gemini and just ask or upload your PDF to ChatGPT or Gemini and ask it to give you the structure. It'll uh, output it for you and you can just paste it into here. So now that we have all of this information kind of given to the AI agent, we can execute this step and kind of see what the output it gives us. And you can see that it kind of gives us one big output all in JSON. Most of the time, uh, people uh, ask to output the content as JSON, but then it would give it all in a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different schemas. This way, um, but this way, it's all going to be into one, and we can simply pass it over to our next agent. Now, the next agent is kind of where things get a little more complicated. So, uh, this is where all of the juice is in the video. Same idea: select the model that you want, and then now we kind of given it um, an explanation at the top. So you can pause the video quickly, go ahead and uh, paste this into here, but pretty much we're just explaining to the AI exactly what I'm telling you that it's going to do. It's responsible for generating a JSON payload to use to replace the text in a document. Um, and I also gave it some important things to down here. So including the documents web view link under URL, say case, set case sensitive to true, replacement limit to one. These are all important things to have. Um, you can change the name to whatever you want here. So I asked it to use final file as the name, um, but you can output it to anything that you want. And then from there, I actually give it a test output. So this is actually what the PDF co um, structure should look like. I don't know. I'm not sure if they have it here yet. So it's kind of something like this. So you can see that this is an example payload that they given. Um, so you want to actually give your AI that as well. So kind of give it exactly what you want. And you can see that I have uh, two main things here. That's going to be the search strings and the replace strings. These are the two things that we want. And how do we know what we want is because the search strings were the ones that we asked for and the replace strings are the ones that it needed to get from originally. Now that we have all of this here, we can go down into our next prompt, which is going to be actually giving the data. So this was just explaining to the system what it's going to do and how to structure the JSON payload. And now we've given it all the information here. So first we've given it the extracted context of the original document, which was grabbed from here, extract from text. And then here are the requests made by the user, which we got from over here, the request that we asked in our Slack. And then here, here is the URL for the payload. So this is going to be from over here, download file. It's going to be the web view link. So simply, um, you want to grab this. If in your Google Drive, if you are doing this following me um, in Google Drive, you want to make sure that it's a shared folder. So make the folder public um, before you go ahead and do this. If not, then you're going to have to upload it to a temporary server or something else because they won't be able to read um, the Google Drive's encryption. All right, so now that we have all of this information from here and we have all of our information um, given to the data, we wanna make sure that this is not selected as JSON as well. Why? Because our output is just going to be that JSON payload anyways. So if we only want it to be our, uh, everything to be in the payload, we'll leave this as unselected. 
So now that we have this, we can execute this step and we can see the output that it's given us. So the output that it's given us is pretty much an entire um, JSON payload. And that JSON payload is what we're going to be using to access our PDF.co. So let's go ahead and make that call to our API. All right, so now it's time to make that request to our uh, PDF.co API. I've already done this before, um, so it would take too long. But simply what you want to do is make sure you have all your credentials set up with PDF.co. Um, you could have done this within the body as well. I just like to kind of make them in the header so you can reference it for a later time. Um, but yeah, for the URL, we want to use the PDF.co um, edit dash replace dash text. So like I said, reference the PDF documentation if you have any other questions. Um, but yeah, so we want to use that URL. We want to make sure these are all selected off, but we do want to send a body content type JSON using JSON. And you can see that this is kind of maybe looks different from what you're used to. A lot of the times in workflows, you'll actually kind of structure the JSON in here. But you can see that all we had to do was give it our content. And if we open it up, we can actually see that our content is a JSON structure. What is the JSON structure? It's a search strings. So it knows when it went to go search up is that our purchase order is 10, 11, and that we were looking for purchase order. Replace strings, it was one, two, three, four, and invoice. So it knows that originally the invoice number or purchase order number was 1011, and the document type was purchase order, and it's showing us what it wants to be replaced with. So you can kind of see all of that. And that simply just comes from our um, AI. We didn't have to do anything else. It did all of the structuring for us. And you can see how dynamic this is. So now every time that you ask for anything different, the AI knows that it can structure for one request, two requests, three requests, so that you could do this for multiple things. Um, but yeah, so now that we have all of that in here, um, pause the video if you need to check anything. I did select the redirects because sometimes if you're asking for a lot of things, it'll start um, asking for too many redirects. So you kind of want to max it out there. And then we're going to execute this step. This does take a few seconds, um, but not too long. And pretty much it's just making a call to our PDF.co with the file that we gave it and the uh, requirements. Once it's done, it's going to send us back a temporary link. We can go ahead and get an HTTP request node and download that link to our workflow. So drag that over here, execute the step. And then we can quickly open this up to kind of see how it looks. And nice, we change the document type to invoice and the uh, invoice number to one, two, three, four. So that all worked nice there. Perfect, just quickly taking a look at everything here. And yeah, so now once we have that downloaded to our workflow, we can send it back to our Slack server um, to kind of give it back to the user. So you can imagine in a real case scenario, the re uh, user would receive the message in Slack, request the changes, and now we're going to upload that document back to that same user. So we're going to go ahead and upload a file. The file we have already here because we just requested it into our workflow. We just want to make sure we have all of our correct accounts selected. And we want to use that same channel that we used all throughout this workflow. So now when we go ahead and execute this step, we can now see that we went from the original document, which was the purchase order, and we've changed it into the invoice. So that is pretty much um, how you can edit PDFs in N8N using no code at all. If you have any other questions, please let me know down below in the comments. Um, it's a huge support for me if you guys leave a like, subscribe, um, any comments as well. And if you have any questions for any uh, future videos, anything that you guys want to see, please leave them down below and I'll try my best to um, accommodate to each one of your requests. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.